News Night tonight, we are taking a look at the pro bono scheme. And in 2008, the pro bono scheme of the Uganda Law Society was initiated as a pilot project by the Uganda Law Society in partnership with the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, supported by the Legal Aid Basket Fund. Its services are premised on the fact that a significant proportion of the Ugandan population lives in abject poverty with limited access to justice as they cannot pursue the same due to high related costs. The project currently covers the districts of Kampala, Gulu, Jinja, Kabale, Kabarole, Masindi, Soroti, Arua and Mbarara through the satellite clinics of the Legal Aid Project of the Uganda Law Society. Today we discuss what they have achieved and more with Fiona Nabasa, the Vice President of the Law Society and also Chairperson of Pro Bono and Legal. And she is here with me in studio. Yes. Good evening and uh, welcome to NTV. Thank you, Walter. Yeah. Let's start at the point of rule of law in Uganda. Yes. How do you make, you know, the adherence of rule of law in the country? As a law society, we are mandated under uh, our, our objectives to ensure that we advocate for the rule of law, to ensure that we are a sort of watchdog for the country, to ensure that uh, good governance mm -hmm. is upheld. And we do this through advocacy. We've been doing it through um, uh, holding um, uh, the actors, the different justice actors to account. We've also been um, handling what we call, we've had, we've had rule of law symposiums where you get everybody together to speak on the issues of rule of law. We also have what we call the quarterly rule of law reports that name and shame and also give recommendations. And I must say that in the last two years, these have become a, a point of, of, of conversation for most of the justice actors as they make their decisions. All right, so what are some of those major cases you've encountered as you interacted with you know, the people today who appeared? Oh, today was fantastic, Walter. Mm -hmm. I think we had over 500 clients and over 500 lawyers, so that was really a great attendance, and we thank everybody who showed up. Well, uh, most of the cases uh, have to do with land, with land grabbing. Uh, you also ha we also have cases where people have relatives who've been incarcerated and they're looking for options. We also have disputes that have to do with um, succession. Um, when someone dies and there are issues of uh, uh, regarding family succession, we've received some issues that have to do with domestic issues, for instance, uh, separation, um, cust child custody, and such cases. That's around where most of the cases lay. Do the pro bono services, you know, cater for? All those categories you mentioned. Yes. All of them. Yes. Uh, uh, family wrangles, uh, domestic. It you know. it it caters for you see pro bono services are available to the indigent, mm -hmm. regardless of what the case is, as long as your 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 issue is justice, we are in the business. How far do you go with all these people? Uh, we go all the way. Uh, last year we did we handled 10,400 cases and of those I must say that 546 were handled successfully and we are hoping to complete the rest as we also add on what we got today. All right now Ugandans have for a while not trusted the judicial system hence you know it was like mob justice is this mistrust changing? I think it's beginning to change because even the courts are coming down to understand the challenges that our people are, have, have been undergoing. So they've introduced things like plea bargaining, uh, which, which means that much as if you plead guilty, you don't waste the court's time and then maybe you get a reduced sentence, but also the family that is aggrieved gets to get involved in the process. So they don't feel that they're just freeing you. Then we have uh, mediation, which has also gone a long way to take out many of the cases that would otherwise delay. However, we still have a lot of case backlog. We also have a lot of corruption sometimes, um, or maybe because we don't have, we're not properly registered and it's hard to follow up people. When people get bond or bail and they bail out, yeah. they run out, it's very hard to make sure that the people who are grieved get justice. So sometimes that's why people lose their confidence. But that is not um, 
a reason or a basis to resort to mob justice. All right, pro bono is free. Yes. Why is justice very expensive in our country? In our country, I think time is money. So um, because we have a backlog, because uh, our judiciary is not well constituted as we speak, they have very, we, have, we still need more judicial officers, we need more prosecutors, we need more state attorneys. Uh, our budgets have not been allowing this, our fi finances. So because of that, there's a case backlog. Case backlog means that the new cases now are, are not getting as much time as they should. Uh, the second thing is also that we have few courts and few places, so you find that uh, accessing justice is difficult. There are certain things like visiting the locus. So to, to bring justice to the people as Uganda Law Society, we're trying to find ways of working with our communities, working with students to ensure that we reach everywhere. All right, let's conclude this at the point of corruption. Yes. Of course, you know, the Chief Justice did mention today. Yes, he You know, did. that ethics and professionalism must be applied. Mm. How are you, as the Uganda Law Society, trying to, you know, eliminate uh, the few elements of corruption in, in the profession? As a profession, we've decided that we want to go the way of self-regulation. We're regulated by the Law Council, but we want to act like a sieve before those cases get to the Law Council and apply mediation at our level with our own advocates and, let, and, 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 and sort out these things so they stop being an embarrassment. But we're also recognizing advocates that have uh, irrevocable reputations, and I think that will encourage people. We want to also be able to to publish advocates that are of good repute and recommend them and in that way uh, everybody will want to be on the right side of the law. Thank you very much. We'll take your word for it and we will hold you Hope to account so. when you. we you know, find some of these missing links. Yes. Uh, thank you Fiona Narasa, the Vice President of the Uganda Law Society. Thank that you was news night. Let's take a short break and we'll return with more. Don't go away. All right, now one person has died from cholera and 28 others are admitted at an isolation center in Namatala Health Center 3 in Bale District. A deceased, a 12-year-old, reportedly died at a private clinic in Mbale town. And according to the assistant district health officer, Kevin Achom, the five sub-counties of Bukasacha, Busiende, Namanyonyi, Namavasa, and Mbale municipalities, Northern Division in Mbale, are being investigated for more cases. Robert Mukamba, the local council three chairperson in Bukasacha sub-county, has blamed the outbreak there on poor hygiene. <laughs> Bukasach mostly is where we have registered many cases. The first case we got from the municipality was we even informed our counterparts in Sironko. The DHO had to come in, they take precautions, measures. But however, unfortunately, again, the brother to the index client also got infected. We had to very first take that one to Namatala Health Center, whereby he was also discovered to be having the virus. He was also positive with the cholera jam. But it's basically poor hygiene and the poor latrine coverage, like in Bukasacha. We have a challenge, there is open defecation, and the water and sanitation program is very poor. And you know when there is a lot of rains, there is always a tendency of overflow of water. The industrial park, for example, uh, we, when the, the, the Chinese took over, there are some trenches they put because uh, it had some areas that are waterlogged. And that channel was diverted 